One, two, hey. Yat e she Janita Benali Yanishya. My name is Janita Benali. And I'm Dahatiahem Benali. Dahi, what do you think of your mom yelling into a megaphone at these demonstrations? I'm proud of her. I've been waiting for the time that Dahi will be embarrassed of me. <laughs> I've grown up watching my grandmothers fight against relocation and fight against the desecration of sacred sites and fight against the removal of our people from our traditional homeland. My brothers and I formed a punk rock band to really kind of bring voice to these issues. Today she's still fighting and singing, but from a more hopeful place. Janita and her brother Clayson just released an album called Fight Like a Woman. I'm Laura Morales. We'll find out what shifted for Janita in this episode of Changing Woman. Looking at the cover of your CD, you're holding your bass above your head, poised to throw down an electric bass, your weapon of choice. <laughs> I, I, I do love it. I kept thinking, you know, everybody says fight like a girl, and that's such a bad thing. But to fight like a woman, like I come from a matriarchal society. We are Diné, and when we fight like a woman, we really fight. We put our minds and our hearts together. We call on the spirits and the deities. Like, we fight. Navajo women fought alongside of the men in battles against the Spanish conquistadors and against other tribes. I really wanted to connect that history with the fact that as Diné women, we haven't ever stopped fighting. And a lot of people think that fighting is violence. But to be a warrior in our society means that you are nurturing, that you are compassionate, that you will protect. I just want to describe where we are for a second. We're sitting in Clayson's kitchen just east of Flagstaff. The brother and sister are tall, lean, and striking. Janita, you come from a long line of strong women. I saw my grandma, who was this pint-sized woman with gray hair, but had the strength to wrestle down a horse and had the strength to, like, carry whole barrels of water off the back of a pickup truck. I grew up really understanding that as a Diné, as, as a female, that all things were possible. I remember being really little and going out and on the horse and herding the sheep and not having any worry in the world except that maybe a mountain lion would come. But you know what? My grandma and my parents gave me the tools to know what to do if a mountain lion had come. The Benelli kids grew up playing with mountain lion cubs on the dirt floor of their one-room hogan, or traditional Navajo home. Their parents are famous hoop dancer and medicine man Jones Benelli, and music promoter and manager, who they call Momager, Berta Benelli. Our father, Jones Benelli, was actually touring throughout the world with uh, Buffalo Bill's Wild West show. And our mom was really responsible for creating a lot of these iconic rock and roll places. You know, we grew up hearing stories about Janis Joplin, Bob Dylan, Jimi Hendrix, and never really believing. Uh, you know, we're like, oh my gosh, our mom's kind of crazy. And then, you know, meeting her friends as we grew up and we're like, wow, our mom was definitely crazy and she hung out with a whole lot of crazy people. And that's pretty awesome. Yeah. <laughs> so our parents met in Hollywood, California. My mom's car broke down in front of a jewelry shop that my dad was working at doing repairs. So my mom thought, well, I'm, I'll call a tow truck and I will get my bracelet fixed. And she went in and she met my dad. They eventually moved back to the Navajo Nation, where Jones was from, and had three children, Janita, Clee, and Clayson. Jones took the family to the Grand Canyon to perform native dances for tourists. At one point, the family of five lived in a small trailer. We didn't have much access to music other than what our parents were singing and the ceremonies that we were attending. And so our parents' friends said, we've made this mixtape for you. This is called Punk. 
And off that mixtape, there were so many bands. There was Bad Brains, the Sex Pistols. There were uh, the Ramones, of course. And it totally blew our minds, like, because we realized, wow, there is so much truth in this music. There's like, there's so much emotion and so much energy. And that really spoke to us because of, you know, because of our background, because of the resistance and the oppression that we felt growing up, you know, with our connection to, to our homeland and relocation. Many families, including theirs, had been relocated because of a land dispute between the coal mine and the Navajo and the Hopi tribes. Janita's youngest brother, Clayson, found an outlet for his frustration in music. Drums became my passion at the age of like eight, nine, ten. And when I finally bought a drum set at the age of ten, it was just, there was no going back. It just kept playing and playing and playing. And I was a mumbler and I had problems communicating. And for me, the, the drums became my voice. I heard this instrument on an album and I was like, what is that deep rumbling sound? And I just thought it was the most amazing thing. And, and any time that I, I listened to music, I just wanted to hear the deep rumbling sound. And so then I, you know, then found out that it was the bass. I was like, I have to get one. It felt protective for me. Every time I hear that rumble, it just envelops me, you know, I, and I feel like I'm in this protective shell. Their brother Clee bought a guitar at a pawn shop, and they formed a band. Clayson came up with the name. I think I was about maybe eight or nine. Came up with a bunch of different names, and then eventually I'd drawn a picture of the world consumed by the, the pollution and the flames, and I, I called it Blackfire. Blackfire played with groups as big as the Ramones. Through their songs, they protested the environmental and health impacts of coal and uranium. They raged against oppression and cultural genocide, but their biggest cause became the making of snow out of treated wastewater on the San Francisco peaks. The Arizona Snow Bowl, a ski resort north of Flagstaff, was tired of unpredictable winters and wanted to keep business consistent. The U.S. Forest Service had given the ski resort permission to make snow out of treated sewage on federal land. But for generations, the Navajo have believed the mountain to be sacred. The Benelli siblings wrote songs about it, marched in protests. Klee even chained himself to a backhoe. But it wasn't enough. They decided to take the U.S. Forest Service to court. The Benellis appealed to the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals and lost in 2012. Being a minority amongst minorities as Native Americans in this world, we're less than 1% of the population here in the United States. And oftentimes we're completely marginalized, we're ignored. And so when my daughter, she asked me, Dad, when are we going to save the peaks? You know, and it was, it was one of the hardest things, you know, because we, we ended up losing. But she saw that that reality. She knows that. We did our best. We did what we could. And still, we haven't given up. And our elders warned us. They said, you know, we're going to face drought and hardships because we pray to this mountain for water. And here today, you know, seeing our forests die and see the, seeing the horses die from thirst and drought, and there's no coincidence that all these things are connected. For us, 2012 was this turning point. Everything in our lives had kind of collapsed. There were a rash of youth suicides that had happened. The youngest child was nine years old. Thought, how is it possible that a child, a nine year old child, would not have any hope in this world? We questioned, you know, after losing our lawsuit, what comes after anger? We have been angry for so long, and we have been rightfully angry our entire lives. And we realize that what really needs to come after anger is hope. The word for hope in Navajo is Sihasen. That became the name of their new band. Klee opted out to pursue activism and filmmaking. Hope also became necessary as the siblings became parents. Both Janita and Clayson each have two daughters.
It's like putting a drop of water on something that's been dehydrated because it just blossoms. You never realize the amount of love that you have. The love is so immeasurable and so infinite that, of course, you're going to want to move mountains, you know, or you want to actually protect mountains for your children <laughs> because, you know, it's all about, it's all about them. Seahassen has produced two albums. They haven't completely let go of their punk sound, but they've also incorporated folk, pop, and traditional Navajo music. Their latest album, Fight Like a Woman, even includes their kids. We have all the girls singing on it because it's really, you know, about community coming together. And we see our youth as, as our future leaders, especially from the Diné Nation. It's matriarchal, so it's all girls chanting and singing, we can, we will, we are strong together. We can, we will, we are strong together. The source of that song came from the story of L'Oreal Tsunajini from Winslow, who was killed by a police officer brutally in a case that was so unjust. We marched, my daughters marched as well, and we spoke outside of the jail. And I said, hey, we're your community. L'Oreal Tsunajini was someone's daughter. She was someone's aunt. She was someone's mother. Just like you are an uncle, just like you are a father, like it's time for us to come together. The Benelli's are activists and teachers. Janita and Clayson go to schools all over Indian country where there are disproportionately high dropout rates and suicides. They teach teens how to write their own songs. The family also frequently gives workshops on Native American issues, like this event recently at the Flagstaff Public Library, where they talked about Navajo traditions. When we learn about cultures, when we learn about other peoples, then we're less afraid, right? Then, then we don't make up crazy things about people that aren't true, which are called stereotypes. And when we do that, then we can build bridges of respect. Then we realize, well, we're all just one people living on our Mother Earth. Janita says we are a force when we find our commonality rather than our differences. I've been fighting for for over 40 years now since I was like a year old. I was born into fighting and that's what I know. And I can finally take a step back and take a deep breath and know that, okay, you know what? Our future's in really good hands because there are some amazing youth who are really taking leadership, and really holding adults accountable. That was actually a really good segue to fight like a woman, Janita. So what, what does it mean to fight? <laughs> Thanks for doing my job. <laughs> fight like a woman is really written about the stereotypes that we face as women. And we need to confront the stereotypes and start defining ourselves. This is Changing Woman. I'm Laurel Morales. Tomorrow, we'll meet a healer who lives in Gallup. Do you want to sign off? I'm Dahatia Hempinali.